I just thought of the title for the show just seconds ago. Ham Radio Now, episode 267, DMR Unboxed. I'm Gary Pierce, KM4AQ. The reason that I'm doing this episode is uh, I haven't had much time to make Ham Radio Now shows. Uh, mostly dealing with the bear, and I've gotten some um, uh, some cards um, and uh, a lot of email, but even some cards in the mail from folks offering sympathy for the cats that we've lost this year. And that means a lot to me, and it means a lot to Cindy. So thank you, guys. Um, the bear continues to have his medical difficulties. It's a tube feeding, just keeping him going. We're probably in hospice on the bear right now. Um, but it's taking a lot of my time, and I haven't had much time to make episodes. There's a lot of things I'd really like to be doing with ham radio now in current situations. So uh, in the meantime, um, I have been playing with some radios and squeezing in a little bit of time to play with the radios. Uh, two Chinese radios that I've got. Um, this one this one is the uh, the DMR. It's the TYT or Titera MD380. And uh, this one is the BTEC, formerly Bofeng, a uh, 5x3 tri-band radio. And I'm going to um, do a kind of a detailed program on playing with these radios. I don't, I don't do a lot of radio reviews, but I haven't had the opportunity to play with Chinese radios um, other than a couple of mobiles that I reviewed for QST over the past couple of years and was thoroughly unimpressed by them. So I thought, well, I still want to try just a, you know, kind of a standard inexpensive um, radio. And also, I've been wanting to get into DMR and see what it's like. It's far more popular here in North Carolina than D-Star is. So this was an inexpensive way to get into that. And um, so that's why I got those two radios. I can, I can afford them. It's something that a lot of you are, I think, uh, probably feeling the uh, same deal. You can afford them. Getting a lot of new hams into ham radio because... Uh, and getting them on the air because these radios can be afforded. So um, I'm working on the details of the reviews and learning the radios and things like that. But I've also been playing over here with this thing, uh, Facebook Live. Well, this is my Facebook page for the Ham Radio Now public group. And um, there we go. Get, uh, get down there. I've been playing with this Facebook Live thing. I did an unboxing of um, both of these radios on Facebook Live. And the Facebook Live unboxing of this radio <laughs> vanished from Facebook, just went away. Uh, they it, About 150 people saw it, and then I got this cryptic um, notification on Facebook that they were unable to process the video. Well, they had processed it. <laughs> they had. It was done. And uh, people had seen it, and then can't process this video, and it disappeared. And I didn't have a backup. I had recorded the unboxing part, but not a lot of the other stuff that I talked about going in and out of it. Um, I also did a Facebook Live of this uh, this radio, um, the TYT, and that is this here, unboxing the uh, TYT MD680, uh, six, uh, MD380. And... Um, that will be, I put that out on Facebook Live, and there's a lot of other stuff in it. And and I was intending to just use the middle segment, the unboxing, as part of the larger review and edit it down into something pretty short. But just say, here it is. Here I am pulling it out of the box. Well, since I can't do anything else right now, I am going to put the entire Facebook Live video, which for this one I backed up as a recording because <laughs> Facebook's losing my videos, or at least losing that the previous one. Uh, so I recorded all of that, and I'm not getting another episode out in a while. So I will put uh, this unboxing out um, as the complete Facebook Live video and make it a – somebody said it went 40, 45 minutes. It can be a whole episode. It was uh, my buddy Wilson Hines. Um, uh, he, he said could could be a whole episode in <laughs> 45 minutes. Why not? So the, this is, you know, the warts and all plus this long introduction, which I intended to take about 30 seconds on, and, and I'm rambling on and on. Let me turn this thing on just for fun, and uh, let you see what it looks like here. Oh, it's still too bright. 
Makes a lot. Oh, I'm, um, I'm on 446 simplex. I'm not even on a DMR frequency right now. Well, you'll see more of that in the Facebook Live video. I'll play with it some. Um, make some mistakes about what um, what I saw in the radio. For example, I'm going to say this radio came from Buy Two Way Radios. You'll see their website. I will say it was only programmed for the local carry repeater. That's because I didn't know how to use it yet. And I discovered that they had actually programmed it for almost every repeater in um, the southeast, north, uh, north and south Carolina, Virginia area. So it's got a lot of stuff in it, already ready to go. And as I've been talking to people, I think a lot of people are using radios like this. It's a very popular radio. And they're using it pre-programmed, already ready to go. Not very many people getting into the depths of programming the DMR radios. I will get into the depths. I haven't done it yet. I have gotten into some depths of programming this radio, downloaded Chirp, the open source free uh, a donation-based um, software program. Hadn't used Chirp before. And uh, worked pretty well in programming this radio. For those of you that saw the unboxing video before it disappeared, you saw that I had no idea how all that stuff was going to work. So I'm in the middle of the progress of those things. But it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. Uh, so let me shut up now. Oh, uh, uh, Arvin. Arvin, you back there? I'm sitting in front of Arvin. HamRadioNow.tv. If you enjoy the program's but few I've been producing lately, um, and uh, and want to help out. Um, not not real comfortable asking for that right now because I'm not producing a lot of programs. But some folks have said, "Listen, take care of your cats, take care of your family. Do what you, they're our family. Do what you need to do. We'll we'll keep contributing. You people are amazing. We are all amazing. Even those of you who are just watching, I like you guys. If if by the way." You can't afford to contribute to Ham Radio now because, you know, financially or whatever, or you just enjoy the program, but it's not your thing to contribute to things like that. What you can do for me is let other people know that this program exists because discovery is the hardest thing in any of these programs. Me and all the competitors, every other podcast out there, the hardest thing we have to do is to get discovered. To get because there's people who would like the program, people who like me and the and, and watching the things we do that would like it if they knew it was here and they've never heard of it and they never will. So if you can help out, the thing you can do to help out is to spread the word and that would be wonderful. So hamradionow.tv, if either way, because that's a good place to go discover the program. It, the easy thing to do to tell people, here's where you go find it, hamradionow.tv. That'll do it. Let me, let's, go, let's go to Facebook Live and uh, see me... Warts and all, no editing, trying to figure out this, uh, this radio and at least pull it out of a box. Let me see. Looking on my phone. Yeah, there it is. Copy and paste. Over to the group. Think all that's working. So, okay there, YouTube Live. Get back in there. Going to do another unboxing. Okay, I'm not talking into the Heil, talking into the headset to uh, be able to move around and use my hands and stuff. And earphones are bugging me, so I secured the cable. <laughs> um going to do another unboxing. Uh, the last unboxing video, that, and this is going to be a segment to go into a uh, longer program where I do a more thorough, I'm not sure I'll call it a review. I guess it's sort of a review, sort of a review. I haven't done a lot of real reviews of radios on ham radio now. Wearing the wrong glasses again. 
So in a moment, I will start the uh, actual review. Here we go. These are the relatively glare-free, not totally apparently, but less uh, less glary glasses. Um, I, I did an unboxing, a, a similar deal where I did the unboxing live on Facebook to uh, make a segment to do a review of the, now this little radio, the TYT, no, this is the B-Tech, formerly known as Bofeng. <laughs> I guess they got tired of everybody not being able to pronounce their name. So B-Tech, that's what it says right on here. Let's see. Yeah. The B-Tech UV5X3. It's their brand new tri-band radio. So I did the unboxing. Played with it a little bit. Sort of got an idea of uh, how it worked. Had to go to the manual to learn a little bit more about it. The weirdest thing was how to program repeater frequencies in it. Um, the manual was wrong. The manual gave instructions on how to do it. All of the radios that I've been used to so far, most of the radios that you've been used to, unless you've manually programmed a, one of the Chinese radios, you program a receive frequency, you program an offset on two meters, typically 600 kilohertz. A few repeaters have strange offsets, and these days with, with some of the digital repeaters, particularly D-Star, where they've been shoehorned in in different parts of the band, uh, a different offset. But most repeaters on two meters, 600 kilohertz. And then you program in the direction, because in part of the band, the input is below the output. And on part of the band, the input is above the output. So you need the frequency, receive frequency, the offset and the direction and any tones or whatever else you want to uh, need to program in sometimes power levels or something that's memorized. And you, you did all that with this radio, uh, to operate simplex. And then you programmed it into a repeater frequency and it came out simplex. The offset was gone. The direction was gone. It was just simplex. So I went to the manual and it said, well, what you need to do is program in the uh, receive frequency and you've you got to be over in the VFO mode. <clears throat> so you program in the receive frequency on the A side, only on the A side. So there's this AB switch and you store that in the memory. And um, let's see, let's put a, that's a simplex frequency we use around here. Let's um, put in something um, for a repeater. Let's say uh, 146, 640. That's our local repeater. And for doing it on a memory, I'm not going to bother with the offset because I won't need it the way this thing gets programmed. So got 146, 64 programmed in the, uh, the radio. And what the, uh, what the uh, manual described is, first of all, you go to menu and option 27 is the memory channel you're going to put it in. Let me turn this up and uh, maybe we can hear it a little bit. All right. Um, and I don't want to put it in this memory channel because it's already got something in it. So I will dial down and there's an empty channel. This, when it says CH and dash, there's something there. doesn't tell you what it is, but there is something there. And so I step down one more and it's not there. There's no CH dash. So that's an empty channel and I'll push the menu button again. And it said receiving memory. Not sure you heard that very well, but this little speech coming out of the radio said receiving memory. And, and that's sort of a key thing. Um, so I'll go back to the memory mode and go down to where I stored it. There in, in memory number 120, there it is, 146.64, with no offset and, um, and, no, and no direction. 
So what the manual then said to do was to go back to the memory mode and this time push the, I think it was the, make sure I'm showing you, make sure, push the scan button once, which is doubles as the reverse button and, um, and then store it again. And, and that didn't work. Didn't, didn't do anything. Just, you know. Uh, just just beeps at me uselessly and I can't do anything. So what I discovered, and I looked on uh, YouTube at a couple of other people to, and, uh, and on the web to see what I might be doing wrong. And there were a couple of other descriptions that I discovered on the web, <laughs> and they were all wrong. Some of them were close, but some of them were wrong. And there was a guy who even made a YouTube video and said, this is how you do it. And he's pushing all the buttons on the radios doing that beep, 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 you're wrong, wrong, wrong. And he just kept on going. And I don't think he got his radio programmed. He wasn't using the, um, the UV five X three. He was using the dual band version, but appeared to be the same, same thing. So here, here's how it works. I've got the one forty six six four programmed in, in a memory and uh, go back to VFO. And now I have to put in the input frequency separately. And so 600 kilohertz and down 146. Yep. So normally, uh, and, and typically hams don't think very much about the actual frequency of the input to a repeater. They think I'll put the, their received frequency and offset amount 600 kilohertz and they almost never think of well 14604 is the input to a 14664 but with this radio you have to think that so there's 14604 and now the weird thing to my brain is that I'm going to go back in memory and um, program it in again and the next time I hit it it's gonna program in and let me see if I can get up here where you can hear it so this thing, it said transmitting memory. And so now when I go to the VFO mode, we see this little plus and minus above it, which seems to indicate that there's an offset. And, um, yeah, there's that, uh, that extra function of the, um, the star and scan it says, it says scan on the display. And when I push it just briefly though, it switches to receive on the input. And that verifies that I've got the uh, memory offset uh, set correctly. So, you know, weird. Never programmed a radio that said, well, first you program in the receive frequency for the radio, then you program in separately the transmit frequency on the same memory. But the radio gave me a clue by saying, um, receive memory and then transmit memory. That's not the words it said. I forget what, exactly what it said. Uh, but, um, and any other time that I put in a frequency on the radio and then store it to an existing memory, it overwrites the transmit memory. So weird. I've discovered a few other things about the radio, um, that I will get to in a more detailed explanation of it. I was going to mention that I'd, I'd done this as a uh, Facebook live video and a couple hundred of you saw it. And then Facebook sent me an error message saying it couldn't encode the video and it disappeared. It had encoded the video. I saw it. Many of you saw it. It was there. And then it disappeared. And I hadn't recorded a backup of the whole thing. The only part that I recorded was what I was going to use on the unboxing. So that disappeared. Let's see if this one sticks around. I got the recorder going <laughs> for the whole thing. It wasn't that valuable a thing to lose, but... Some of you probably missed it. Okay, so uh, that's it for the BTEC. That's not what this Facebook Live is all about. And by the way, I'm not looking at anything in terms of comments coming from you guys. I suppose I could. Um, I suppose I could, uh, but... Um, well... Yeah, there's a bunch, <laughs> bunch of them coming in. I'm, I'm going to do something else here on the... Um, on the computer, and I, I don't want this audio to get in the way. So 
Mm, oh, that started too. Weird. Guess I'll have to go backwards. Yeah. So I'll check your uh, comments afterwards, but I appreciate those of you that are making them. I suppose I could look at my, this is getting too complicated. I suppose I could look at my phone. Hmm, somebody else is live now. Let me dial down the uh, brightness so that the uh, micro cam can look at it. And it says, um, Sean, uh, Sean Donate Major is live now. Let's look at Sean. See what he's doing. <laughs> okay, well, that's pretty cool. Um, so, me. Uh, I got to get back to Ham Radio now. There. Oops. Okay, so where's my live? This was all very complicated for a appliance operator like me. I don't know where my live thing is. Oh, there it is. Now, turn the volume down. And now uh, I can see comments from you guys. <laughs> and you can see them. So this is sort of circular. Okay, so I got something else to do, so I'm going to ignore that for a few minutes. Uh, so this is going to be, and as you've seen from the, the title on the Facebook thing, um, I got another radio, and I'm going to do a little unboxing here, and then later on when I get a chance, and I don't know if I, when I'm ever going to get the chance, but later on when I get a chance, I'll finish both of those programs, the uh, UV5X3 and this, uh, this radio, which is uh, TYT. Um, and it is, yeah, wrong buttons. There we go. Still in the box. I did, I cut the box open because, um, I don't have a proper box cutter. I just use scissors and I don't want anybody, I don't want anybody complaining to me that I was opening the box in an unsafe manner. So, um. We haven't, I haven't even looked inside, so let's take a look, you and me together. Oh, I got this, um, I got this from this company here. Control the, uh, why? What's wrong with this keyboard? Did I turn off my numlock? Maybe I did. There we go. I got it from this company here. Um, buy two-way radios. And... What I got was this DMR starter kit. It's got the radio and it's got a bunch of other stuff. Um, 170 bucks. I had been uh, tipped to get this radio, the DMR 390 or the MD 390, which has, is waterproof and it's a little bit bigger, a little bit different. Um, and uh, a friend of mine, Brian um, K A9, I think uh, QJT, um, saw him at a bike MS. A pre-event meeting, going to be helping out with a bike MS event down in Newburn, North Carolina in September. The weekend before I head down to the Tapper conference, the, the, the ARL Tapper DCC down in uh, St. Petersburg. So a lot of travel coming up in, the, in September. And Brian was showing me, he had this uh, MD390 um, and he recommended that it was a little bigger and he thought it was a little advanced from the MD380. So I tried to order it and uh, discovered when I tried, it was out of stock. And they were accepting back orders. And I got a note from um, one of the sales guys there that said the 380 is pretty much the same radio, it's just a little smaller and not, uh, not waterproof. It's water resistant, not waterproof and a whole bunch cheaper. So I'm not real sure if it is really, truly exactly the same radio, but the 380 is what a lot of people out there have. And so I thought, what the heck? And since it was uh, uh, cheaper with the big package with the speaker mic and the battery eliminator and a bunch of other stuff, I thought, what the heck, I'll have him send me that. So that's what I got. Everybody's also real excited about this radio, the uh, uh, 9600 mobile radio. And it had been 
um, unavailable. Oh, I thought I saw that it was um, shipping. Oh, free shipping. I see. <laughs> That's what I was looking at. Free shipping. But it's not currently shipping. It's also pre-order. Not, uh, not currently available. And I kind of want a um, DMR mobile radio more than another handheld. I got more handhelds that I know what to do with and can carry around. And about the only time that I would really use it is when I'm driving around in the car. So I thought a mobile radio would be more useful. I don't know where I'd put it in my car because my car is pretty full of radios, even with that big stack that you see um, when I'm doing the on the road videos. But I'd find a way to squeeze it in. Unfortunately, um, it is not a remote control head. It has to stick on the radio. So I wouldn't be able to um, put just a little control head on my stack of stuff. I'd have to get the whole radio up someplace where I can see it and manipulate it. Uh, maybe I'll take one of the other ones off. I don't know which. I've got two radios on that stack that don't have remote control heads. It's one of them is a, a GRE scanner and the other is a, uh, a Linko 220 megahertz. And they sit on the top of the stack. You've seen the pictures. They sit on the top of the stack. They make the thing top heavy and the whole radio is sitting there. I don't have more room on top of the stack to add more. I mean, I could, but then I couldn't see out the windshield in one direction. As it is with the stack, I can see above it just down to the hood so I'm not missing anything out there in traffic land because I've got that big stack of radios. But if I added one more, I would not see something out there through the windshield. I probably wouldn't be cool with various law enforcement people. I've never been questioned or stopped or anything else based on the stack of radios. In fact, a couple times that a cop has looked in the car, they thought, oh, that's cool. It looks like our cars. <laughs> even, even more fancy. All right, so this is the uh, this is the radio we're going to be taking a look at the uh, MD the TYT MD three eighty, and now let me get to the part that I'm going to use in the show. Okay, let's do the unboxing the uh, TYT MD three eighty. Everybody stand still. Uh, here's the unboxing unboxing cam, adjusted a little bit from the. Unboxing I did on the uh, the BTEC radio. Well, let's see what's inside here. Return and an exchange policy. Yeah, I'm going to need that. I bought um, a bunch of extra stuff with it. It came as a package. Looks like this um, from Buy Two Way Radios. So they got all that extra stuff. And uh, so that's what's in the bag. Looks like the programming cable. Speaker mic. Um, I think this, oh yeah, this is a cute little thing that would, um, let me, uh, <laughs> try to, try to make themselves look like diamond. Uh, let me stick an antenna out, um, on a window mount, a little rubber duck to get at least outside. Make things work a little bit better. Let's see what's in this box. Totally unmarked. No, oh, it says Titera BE MD380, but I don't know what it is. Oh, this is the battery eliminator. The radio doesn't come with something that would let you just plug in external power. You've got to take the battery off the back and Put this thing in uh, in its place, and um, then you can run the battery off of car voltage. So I'm going to try to keep all this stuff stuffed in the uh, in the box, otherwise I'm going to lose it. So here's the the main attraction, the uh, the radio itself. Um, Uh, USB driver and programming software and a uh, not too thick uh, manual. I am hoping that I don't need the USB driver 
there's been an issue with the USB dongles and things that you plug in on USB that they should have firmware in them that any version of Windows or a Mac or uh, maybe even Linux can recognize immediately. It should be standard stuff and operate without having to load a driver from uh, from a CD. We'll find out later on when we do that part uh, whether that's the case. But I've had plenty of things that it loaded a driver and didn't work, and then I had to go back to find out uh, to load a driver from their software and delete the driver that was uh, on there. Uh, delete the driver that Windows found and use their uh, their version. And that's not the way it's supposed to be. But that's been the case with um, a little too much Chinese stuff. Yeah, somebody's trying to talk on the uh, the BTEC radio. I, turn that off. I, I, I um, handed this radio to Jeff, AC4ZO, uh, the other day at dinner and said, um, turn it on. And he, he did the same thing I did. He's looking around. Yeah, that, that's that's not power. It looks like it might be power. That that looks like it might be power. That's not power. That, hmm, maybe, maybe. <laughs> Click. <laughs> and uh, actual power switch on the, uh, um, on the volume control. All right, so uh, back to this guy. There's what everyone has been waiting for to come out of the box. The actual radio. And uh, probably underneath, yeah, there's a bunch of the typical accessories. A drop-in charger. A couple of antennas. Not for the same reason as the um, the BTEC radio. The BTEC radio had a, a, a dual-band 2-meter, 70-centimeter antenna and a separate 220 antenna, probably for the same reason that Kenwood discovered they couldn't make a uh, rubber duck work properly. Here's a Kenwood tri-band radio. Couldn't make rubber duck work properly on 220, so they just shipped it with one that didn't work very well on 220. The B-Tech guys sent two antennas. I have put my extended uh, little duck here on, um, on the B-Tech radio, and because it was the wrong gender, there's a little uh, double female um, adapter in there. And then this uh, Comet extended dual band antenna. And then um, it works pretty well. Radios working okay. Goofy programming. All right, back to the TYT. So let me take this out of the bag. Do it over here on this camera. Because this is what everybody wants to see. And pull the... Can I get the... Uh, the <laughs> Almost. Well, in theory I should be able to do it. And there's a little tab. But I can't get my fingernail under it. I'll leave that on there for now. And we'll grab a battery. I don't know if the battery will have enough charge to um, make the radio do anything. Now with the uh, the BTEC radio, wrong camera. With the with the BTEC radio, uh, all I needed to do was turn it on. Whoa, it's already on. And um, and start programming stuff. This radio, being DMR, there we go. Um, requires more sophisticated programming. And the guys at uh, Buy Two Way Radio, these guys here, asked me for my DMR ID, and I had a DMR ID. Uh, I had asked uh, for the DMR ID mm, a couple of weeks ago. And I think that was as a, a result of the uh, program I did with um, uh, Uli um, Uli Altfater on. Oh, okay, cool. Pulling out antennas from the from the box as I speak. I uh, discovered that um, I would need to get a DMR ID and that I could get one from a website. I forget if it, if I got that tip from him or as a result of doing other work on that program. I'm going to put the small antenna on first. 
They got two antennas in the that came with it. Let's take a look at this one. This is not a dual band radio. It's um, single band, but so there's one that um, a typical small rubber duck for UHF, and an extended one that I'm sure will work lots better as they typically do. And uh, oh, these uh, also tell me something about the antenna. Steady. On the bottom. Tell me what, what band it's for. I don't know if you can read that very well, but uh, but they do. So let me put um, the little one on just for convenience. Oh, it's also um, the... Now oh, wait. I get confused. Because the gender... They call it female or male, but the gender's a little weird because it's got um, elements of both. <laughs> They're gender confused. So now I got to look at uh, another antenna. Let's see what the deal is with gender. Didn't want to do that. This is compelling television. All right. So this is the gender that we're used to with um, Japanese radios. Yeah, so it's still the reverse gender, the typical of uh, most Chinese radios. That's not strictly a Chinese radio thing. Um, I've got... A few radios, um, well, one radio. Is it sitting back here? Yeah. I don't know how far I can get. Oh, I can't quite get far enough. Where did it go? There we go. Um, this is a uh, Johnson UHF P25 radio, and it's also got the reverse gendered antenna on it. So... It's not purely the Chinese thing. There's two ways to do it. If there's two ways to do something, people will do it both ways. So, put this back on the B-Tech with the gender bender so that it will work. Double female. I don't know, in a in a society like ours here in America where sexuality is such a fraught topic that we can't really talk about it very much and mixed company because we're so worried about our kids and yet we can call these things male and female and don't discuss the reason why <laughs> don't say why but we can so anyway as i was saying the um the b-tech uh i could just turn on and do some programming um the dmr is going to be more complicated because it needs specific DMR programming. And so the guys that buy two-way radio asked for my call sign and my ID, and I supplied that to them. And so um, here's what I'm seeing as I uh, turn it on. It's a little too bright for the camera. Uh, and so let me turn it off. It came, it came turned on. Let's see. Oh, yep, another, uh, another radio that uh, has the volume control and power switch on one thing bugging me that I want to pull that off can't go get my fingernail under it so anyway when I turned it on it says uh, maybe if I turn it obliquely to the camera you can see it there we go they programmed that that much in and it's got local repeater um programmed in in channel one and let's see what else they got um carry oh carry prn that's that would be the statewide network carry local i guess that would be and there's a repeater right here in town um and then i don't know what these things are at all no clue 
So I will have a lot of learning. Higher learning curve. <laughs> it's complaining that I've gone to an unprogrammed channel. So all they put in was the the one local repeater and then uh, extra stuff to learn. And I think it was Brian. Oops, wrong camera. Brian was telling me that the uh, uh, local repeater was down. Got hit by lightning. Let's find out. Try, try to key up. Battery seems to be full charge. Um, okay, before I get, well, it's getting into the microphone. I don't know if I don't know if I'm keying up anything or not, because um, I, I'm not sure what to look for, and I don't know what the beeps mean. I'm really ignorant about this, but with it getting into the microphone, there's something interesting because this um, being a DMR radio, uh, doing that two communications channels on one RF channel by what they call time domain, um, TDMR, um, transmits for a, you know, a few milliseconds, you know, 30 milliseconds or so, receives for 30 milliseconds or so. And then in that receiving 30 millisecond chance or, uh, window, another station can transmit their stuff and it gets split out into two channels. I don't want to go through the whole DMR explanation here just now, but just understanding that that two RF signals can exist on one channel. And the only way they can do that is by sharing it in time. Otherwise they'd step on each other. Excuse me. And so the, the weird thing is I key it up and it gets interference into the microphone as you can hear the transmitter cycling on and off very quickly. I'm assuming that's, oh yeah, it's loud. So you can hear it that little feature. Well, I, that's kind of a useful thing to catch in this, uh, microphone, but would it do the same thing on the Heil? Would it do the same thing on the Heil? Seems to. Yeah. <clears throat> Even the, uh, highly shielded Heil microphone is subject to that. So interesting, uh, the, there is a repeater up in Raleigh. I don't have to lean over to the Heil because that's not the microphone I've got turned on right now. There, there is a repeater up in Raleigh that, um, is on the air, but lacking its, uh, connection, um, uh, its internet connection. So it's not on the network. At least it, that was the word I got the other day, but I don't think, um, I don't think that's programmed in here. These are just different ways of doing things all through the same local repeater, the carry repeater. Yeah. And the Raleigh repeater is not programmed in. So they, they took me uh, far enough to get started. And these things are, are going to be, I guess, talk groups or something. I have no idea what they mean. I've heard the term... Um, it's... it's, it's uh, Oh, there we go. Let it uh, scroll through. Oh, it's still, it's still too uh, truncated for me to remember what I'm trying. Oh, Brandmeister. Yeah, Brand Brandmeister is a networking thing for DMR. A new networking thing for DMR. There are several different uh, networking systems for doing DMR. There's some of the original ones and then Brandmeister came along and does something else. Um, I remember um, W2XAB, John, uh, we did a, a forum at Dayton a year ago and I put that on ham radio now. And I think he was talking about it. Um, maybe it was, uh, it was Roland down in the Charlotte area um, on his forum that we also put on ham radio now from down in Charlotte. I think he was talking, yeah, I think he was the one who was talking about Brandmeister. And then I did the program with Uli, uh, and 
we were talking about that DV4 mobile that again, everybody's waiting for, because that would be cool. It would do all of the digital modes and multi-band, two meters, 220, 440. It's going to be expensive. It was, you know, ballparking the 900 to $1,200 range. And probably, probably the higher end of that. They discover all their costs and how much money they got to make to get, to, to get back on a reasonable footing with that. So, you know, we're all hoping for something like that, but it's going to be very expensive. That's why I picked this up um, now, because it was relatively cheap, and it would at least give me a foothold in DMR and a chance to learn some stuff if I ever have time to, to, to learn about it. So um, we did that program, and then I got a couple of comments. Well, maybe just one comment, and I forget if it was on Facebook or on YouTube. Comments come in every place, and someone said, uh, you didn't even talk about Brandmeister. I didn't think to talk about Brandmeister, and uh, he didn't mention it. He's got his own networking thing going that this radio is going to be more set up for, although I'm sure all the other networks will work. So um, there, I, so I, that's what I was saying. I, was, I think I see that this thing here, no, it's it's not Brandmeister. It's, it's saying bridge something, bridge two. And I don't know what CA would be. So I got a lot to learn. So uh, this is it from the unboxing. That's as far as I'm going to go right now. But in a moment, and for me, it's probably going to be weeks. For you, it is going to be a little flash of uh, transition. And uh, you'll get back to um, watching uh, the, the rest of the review as I figure this thing out. So let's do a little comparison. This is the B-Tech that I also picked up this week. Um, so the TYT is a little bigger and um, the um, the 390 would be even a little bit bigger than that, but uh, they're still pretty small. It, it feels heavy, feels solid, feels metal, not, uh, not plastic. There's a comparison to my Kenwood um, um, THF6, so it's a little bit bigger than that. There's, you know, there's otherwise no comparison. This is a tri-band. THF6 is a tri-band FM only radio. So just for physical comparison, have I got, yeah, I've got a ICOM 92 here to compare it to. So they're fairly comparable in size and in thickness and in heft. So interesting. The display is staying on. I don't know uh, if it will um, unlight at some point um, and uh, give the battery a break. So we'll see. Like I say, it's going to be a while before I'm able to dig into that. But for you, it's going to be after this brief transition. Okay, Facebook guys. A little sneak peek into something that'll be a program in a long, in a long, long time. Hey, Mike, Mike Marks and the 8XM is there. Thomas Reddy. Um, no, uh, Thomas Reddy is asking, will DMR do P25? No, totally, totally separate digital protocols. Uh, DMR is a thing unto itself. Um, it's sometimes called Moto Turbo. Um, so there's D star, a thing unto itself, C4 FM, Yesu system fusion, a thing unto itself. Although C4 FM is sort of the underlying digital thing and, and you can do more with C4 FM than what Yesu is doing with system fusion. And we are rapidly going past my pay grade in terms of understanding how you mix and manipulate these, uh, digital modes. Um, then, um, so DMR, D star system fusion, P25, NXDN is another one. Uh, th there's literally going to be an infinite number of possible permutations of digital voice and digital systems because you can, you know, just make anything you want with digital. How many of them will show up in ham radio? How many of them will be commercially viable? I have no idea. Will we see another one anytime soon? Probably. Probably. When Yesu came out with System Fusion, there 
ballyhooing, new, improved, better than D-Star. I don't think they mentioned D-Star, but new, improved, better, which is fine. It was new, sort of, although C4FM has been around for a long time. It improved, well, different, and um, better, tough. Ask me sometime about the word better in advertising. That's a tough word. I, I did a, a talk when I was um, in, in college. I read a book that taught me something interesting. And I've been working in advertising for a long time, and I understand this, this stuff pretty well now. That watch TV commercials, radio commercials, advertising in magazines, newspapers, and watch how much the word best is tossed around. It's the best. It's the best product out there. Watch how rarely you hear the word better tossed out there. My, my premise in this talk in, at, that I was giving as a, a speech or something in, uh, in college was better is better than best. And most people will say, how can that be? Best is best. If something is the best, it's better than something that's only better. But in, in advertising, we got this, it's a legal distinction. It is something called parody advertising. If I say I'm the best, Ham Radio Now is the best ham radio podcast on the internet. All that means is that I'm not claiming to be superior to anyone else. I could be just as good. Basically means everybody else is just as good. We're all just as good. We're all the best. My car. It's the best car available. It's the same as all the others. They're all just as good. If I want to say something is better, then legally I have to prove superiority. If I say that, that Ham Radio Now is better than Ham Nation, I have to prove some product advantage, something that makes it superior. I can say it's best all day long. That's a fairly meaningless term. If I say it's better than something, I've got to be able to show it. Otherwise, they can come sue me and say, oh, no, you're not better. So you'll hear that it's the best all the time. Some variations. None better. Plenty just as good, but none better. Watch for that. Put this stuff back in the box. Cindy's got dinner ready. And, uh, wow, just started to rain like crazy outside. I'm hearing it... Uh, on the uh, on the roof, I'm pretty sure you can't hear it, but I can. So uh, let's see anything else here on. Um, on the page, am I still live? I think I am. I'm, I'm not really much of an expert in how this stuff works. So somebody else could uh, a, a new comment from Todd. I guess that's new. Come on, dial down. And now I'm nothing. I don't know. It's like the Wizard of Oz. Remember the Wizard of Oz, the very end? The wizard's on his balloon, and it starts to float away, and Dorothy was supposed to be taking Dorothy back to Kansas. It's my favorite, favorite line of technology, and they didn't know they were doing technology at the time. He was supposed to be taking Dorothy back to Kansas and somehow she doesn't get in the balloon basket and, and it's sailing away and she says, come back. He says, I can't come back. I don't know how it works. You know, he's the mystical, magical wizard of Oz. He doesn't know how it works. That is me. Story of my life. See you guys. 73, KN4AQ, over and out. I can't do the ARVN logo thing at the end of... Uh, Facebook, because I don't have any titles set up. So you just see me reach over here and click the goodbye button.